Welcome back, folks. Mr. Johnson with you once again. This is a, a lecture out of section 6.4 in our book. We've covered most of this section, actually, uh, when we talked about titration curves. This is the first part of that section on indicators, how they work, and how they can be used for titration. So we're going to scroll down. We are on page 385 of our textbook, or 393 of our ebook. I'm going to scroll down and look at this section here on indicators. It's possible in prior science classes or other experiences in your life you've used indicators before. Bromothymol blue, BTB, is sometimes used in biology class to detect the presence of carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide in water forms carbonic acid. So if there's high CO2 concentration in water, the indicator bromothymol blue um, is yellow. But when CO2 concentration is low and when there isn't much carbonic acid dissolved in water, bromothymol blue is, is blue. So if you blow into water that has bromothymol blue in it um, starts blue and as the co2 concentration rises it magically turns to yellow it's really cool you saw me use phenolphthalein in the acid base um, titration i did at the beginning of the rate law lab where it started colorless it's colorless in the presence of an acid and then uh, once there was base in excess it turned pink so that was the that was the point at which i knew i'd, I'd reached or come close to the equivalence point so we're going to talk about how they work um, and why they're so cool so I'm looking at a sentence in pink here, and it turns out that acid-base indicators are in fact weak acids. They tend to be structurally large organic acids with lots of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, but that are weak and that therefore dissociate um, not very readily. Um, what's important about indicators is that they have a different color in their acidic form than they do in their basic form, and that these two colors are, are different and vibrant enough for them to be easily seen in solution. So again, an indicator is an organic acid, a weak organic acid, or a weak acid, you could say, that has a different color in its acidic form than it has in its basic form. Because those colors are so intense, typically for indicators, they're deliberately picked. Only a very few drops of an indicator is typically needed for its um, color to be detectable and to help us know where the equivalence point or endpoint of a titration is. So we've, here we've got a nice visual of, uh, of an indicator, H-I-N. IN stands for the indicator, H is the protonated form, the acidic form of it, and IN minus is the basic form or the conjugate base form of it. When the indicator inter uh, interacts with water, of course, forms its conjugate base, different color, and hydronium. Um, the position of this equilibrium will shift based on the hydronium concentration. If hydronium is high, if we're in a low pH solution, um, it's going to shift the equilibrium to the left, and the HIN form of the indicator predominates. You'd see the acidic form and the color of that predominate. If though hydronium concentration is dropped, meaning hydroxide is higher, meaning the pH is going up, that's taking hydronium out of solution. That's going to, according to Le Chatelier's, shift this equilibrium to the right, and we'd see more and more of IN minus compared to HIN. And at some point, there'd be a higher concentration of IN minus when the pH gets high enough, and we'd see the basic form predominating and its color showing up in solution. And that's what's being reiterated down here in, in green is that in a flask that's acidic, and we'll talk about how acidic it needs to be for the acidic form of the indicator to predominate, but in an acidic flask, you're going to have the HIN form predominating, and the, the color of whatever the HIN um, will be present. Meanwhile, as you add more and more hydroxide, you're pulling hydronium out of the solution, and the equilibrium starts shifting to the right, similar to what I just said a bit ago. And now you're starting to get more IN minus and less HIN. The ratio of IN minus to HIN starts to increase. There's a point at which, and we'll talk about the significance of this point, HIN and IN minus are in equal concentration. And that's when we'd see a color that is the midpoint between the color of the acidic form and the basic form of that, um, of that indicator. Typically that happens so fast in a titration that you never see this intermediate color. You tend to see it go straight from the acidic color to the basic color because at the equivalence or endpoint, the pH rises so fast that you go practically straight from the acidic form to the basic form with just a drop or two. And again, once there's enough hydroxide or the hydronium is low enough, then the ion minus is in such high concentration that its color predominates. So it is in a titration when the concentration of HIN equals the concentration of IN minus, that that color shift occurs, that the shift from the acidic color to the basic color happens. That is the end point of a titration or the transition point. It isn't necessarily 
exactly the equivalence point when moles of acid equal moles of base. They tend to be pretty close, but that is the transition point when the concentration of the acidic form is equal to the concentration of the basic form, and we see this intermediate color. Well, when that's the case, we see this Ka expression showing up once again when the concentration of the basic form, the conjugate base, equals the concentration of the acidic form, the conjugate acid, then the Ka equals hydronium, once again. So at that point, whatever the Ka is of this indicator, which again is a weak acid, will be equal to the concentration of hydronium in that solution. Or, when the concentration of hydronium reaches a certain point, that's equal to the Ka. Of course, we could say it either way. We flipped our page. I'm on 387 of our textbook. Kind of got ahead of myself. Um, because we deal in logarithmic scales in here. If we take the negative log of both sides of that equation, Ka equaling hydronium, we get the pKa equaling the pH. That's a significant statement. What that means for us about indicators is that when the pH equals the pKa of the indicator, that is the transition point. That is the end point. That's the point at which we're at this intermediate color and our indicator is now starting to turn into its new color. So as our book suggests, and we'll go to Appendix A6 here in a moment, different indicators change color over a different range of pHs. The pH range over which an indicator changes color tells us what its pKa is, or allows us to estimate what its pKa is. So let's go to A6 right now, which is on page 522 of our physical textbook or 530 of our e. All right, so here's a list of common indicators. Again, if we were looking at an AP question, these kinds of values that we need would be embedded within the question. Um, let's look at bromothymol blue, second one up from the bottom, which changes color over a pH range of 6 to 7.6. What this means is that below 6, below a pH of 6, it is yellow. Above a pH of 7.6, it is blue. And between a pH of 6 to 7.6, it's changing from yellow to blue. Now, we've said that the exact transition point is when the pH equals the pKa. What we can do is average these two values, 6 and 7.6, and that gives us a fairly good idea of what the pKa of this acid will be. Well, the average of 6 and 7.6 is 6.8. 6.8 is the midpoint of these two numbers that is quite close to the pKa of bromothymol blue. Because when the pH is less than the pKa, it's in the acidic form, it's yellow. And when the pH is above the pKa, it's in its basic form, in this case, blue. If we were to do that for phenol red, average 6.6 .6 and 8.0, we get 7.3, I think I did that math right. 7.3 is an estimate for phenol red's pKa. Again, below 7.3, below the pKa of an indicator, it's in an acidic form, it'd be yellow, and above 7.3, it's in its basic form, it'd be red. So this is now going to feel a little repetitive, but this is just a nice graphic summarizing some of the things I've said. When, again, the concentration of the basic form of the indicator equals the acidic form, that's when the pH equals the pKa of the acid. So when the pH equals the pKa of the indicator, that's when it's in its intermediate color. If the pH is below that, though, we're now looking at this left-hand column, it's in its acidic form. It tends to be that an indicator starts to change color from its acidic form to its basic form when the pH is one less than the pKa. When there's 10 times more of the acidic version than the basic version, we start to see that basic color showing up. That's why the pH range over which indicators change is often a pH range of two. Not quite, but close. So when the pH is one less than the pKa, start to see the color change. When the pH equals the pKa, again, that's that intermediate color, but it happens so fast in a titration, hard to see. And when the pH is one greater than the pKa, there's now so much more of the basic version present that its color predominates, and we say that the indicator has finished changing color. A bit ago, and we'll see it down here in orange, although I mentioned it earlier, um, we said that a pKa of an indicator can be estimated by finding the average of the two pH values over which that indicator changes color. Meanwhile, if you're given a pKa of an indicator, you could estimate the pH range over which it changes color. It would be one lesser than that and one greater than that. So if an indicator, for example, has a pKa of 5.2, we would estimate that it starts changing color at 4.2, 
and would likely have finished changing color at 6.2. Again, at 4.2, it's in its acidic color. At 6.2, it's in its basic color. And 4.2 to 6.2, it's, it's on its way. Down here in orange, we see again what we saw, which is that the indicators pKa can be estimated by averaging, once again, the, the two pH values over which the indicator changes color. Interesting side note, not something you'd necessarily be held accountable for, um, is that there's universal indicators, which have a bunch of different indicators in them. They're very deliberately designed to have indicators that change color over different pH ranges, such that at certain pHs, the combination of these indicator colors gives us uh, a slow transition of colors. So a universal indicator that had thymol blue, methyl red, bromothymol blue, and phenolphthalein in it at less than at a pH less than two is reddish orange due to the combination of all these colors. As the pH rises, some of these indicators colors, excuse me, some of these indicators change color, some don't. So we start to get an orange yellow. And as the pH continues to rise and other indicators change color, the color changes as well. Um, so a universal indicator can be used to tell us what the pH is of a solution. Those would not be appropriate for a titration. They just are a way to tell us within a range what the pH of a solution might be. I've jumped ahead. We'll go back and do a couple practice problems here in a moment, but I'm on page 391 of our textbook, and sorry, I've not done a great job of orienting you to pages. So we're looking at, which was our last lecture, the um, curve for a strong base being added to a strong acid. This is a strong base, strong acid titration. And we know that the equivalence point, when moles of acid equal moles of base, the pH is 7, because both products are neutral. So if you are picking an indicator to indicate the equivalence point of a strong base, strong acid titration, we would want an indicator that changes color at pH of 7. We want an indicator whose pKa is 7. So it starts changing color at 6, and it's done by 8, and it's basically changing color guaranteed right through this equivalence point. So if we go back to table A6, appendix A6, and we were asked to pick an indicator that would be appropriate to indicate the equivalence point of a strong base, strong acid titration, we want one whose pKa is as close to 7 as possible. Well, that's probably going to be bromothymol blue or phenol red. Bromothymol blue's pKa from this range would be 6.8, and phenol red's would be 7.2. So either of those would be appropriate for a strong base, strong acid titration. Meanwhile, if we were asked to pick an indicator to indicate the equivalence point or the end point of a strong base weak acid titration, where at the equivalence point the pH is greater than 7, remember we won't know what the pH at the equivalence point would be unless we're given or do we do some calcs, but greater than 7, so in this case it's, I don't know, 8.8 .8 I think it was, we want an indicator that changes color uh, around 8.8 .8, or whose pKa is as close to 8.8 .8 as possible. Back to Appendix A8, looking at thymol blue or phenolphthalein as a good indicator for a strong base weak acid titration. In fact, phenolphthalein is the one that is typically used. Meanwhile, and you probably know where I'm going, if we had a weak base that we started with and we're titrating a strong acid against that, we know the pH at the equivalence point for that curve or for that titration is less than 7. Let's say 5. Of course, it depends on the math. depends on the weak base we start with. So we'd want to pick something like bromocresol green or, or methyl red. Neither of those would be quite right, but one of those two would work. Because again, the pH change happens so abruptly around the equivalence point that if you get an indicator that's close to having a pKa that equals the pH at the equivalence point, it's going to be appropriate. You might be off by a drop, but not a big deal. All right, we skipped back. We're on page 389 now, looking at this practice problem, practice problem 641, number one, acid base indicators, that I'd like you to try on your own. It's asking you, you've got the indicator bromol phenol blue appears yellow below a pH of 3 um, and blue above a pH of 4.5. You're supposed to estimate the pKa and the Ka of the indicator and determine the color it will display at a 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 HCl solution. So give that one a shot. Come on back and see how your answer compares to mine. All right, so to find the pKa, again, we average the pH range over which the indicator changes color. Average of 3 and 4.5 is 3.75. To get the Ka, Ka is 10 to the negative pKa. 10 to the negative 3.75 is 1.78, or pretty close to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Now that Ka value is pretty much the same as the concentration of the strong acid or the concentration of hydronium. And when the hydronium concentration is the same as the Ka, 
then we have an equal ratio of the acidic indicator and the basic indicator. Meanwhile, another way to have done that is to find the, the pH of this solution, which is the negative log of the concentration of the strong acid or hydronium, 3.75. So when the pH equals the pKa, that's, as we know, when there's as much acidic indicator as basic indicator, and it will be a neither its acidic color nor its basic color, it'll be in between. Yellow and blue makes green. Now, had this pH been less than the pKa, I know it wasn't, then it would be in its basic form. And had the, bit, had the pH been more than one less than the pKa, I misspoke. If the pH is less than the pKa, it's in its acidic form. And if it's one less or more, then the acidic color really predominates. It would really be yellow. If the pH had been greater than the pKa, or at least one greater, 4.75 or more, then the basic form would predominate, would be really blue. Um, we can also use hydronium and compare Ka. When the hydronium concentration is greater than the Ka, which is the, say, the same as the pH is less than the pKa, it's in its acidic form. And when hydronium is less than the Ka, it's in its basic form. So a few different ways to think about that. Anyways, this one's going to be green. All right, we flipped our page. We're on 390 of our textbook, 390 of our ebook. Looking at question three here. I'd like you to give this one a try on your own as well. And come on back and see your answer compares to mine. Try problem three, please. All right, this one ends up kind of like the last one. It's fine, a little disappointing. Uh, all right, so I got the concentration of sodium hydroxide, which is the concentration of hydroxide. It's a strong base, completely dissociates. So if I take the negative log of hydroxide, the negative log of 0 0.001, or 10 to the minus 3, I get 3. If I want to convert that to pH, which I should, because the indicators are always given to me with pKa values, or pH ranges over which they change color, that's going to be 14 minus the pOH, which is 11. So the pH of this solution is 11. Meanwhile, I went to appendix A6 and found that Azarian yellow uh, transitions from a pH of 10.1 to 12. At 10.1, it's yellow. At 12, it's red. The pH is right in the middle here. So it's going to be in between yellow and red. This is the transition point. It'll be orange. So the final answer is orange. Again, had the pH been 10.1 or less, it would be yellow. And the, had the pH been 12.0 or greater, be red. And anywhere between 10.1 and red, excuse me, anywhere between 10.1 and 12, it's transitioning from yellow to red. So some, some version of yellowy orange or orangey red. All right, we're going to finish off a little video of someone blowing into a solution that has bromothymol blue in it. That's an indicator. It is blue above a pH of 7.6, and it's yellow below a pH of 6. Of course, halfway in between that, we'd expect it to be green. Uh, because it's blue, the pH must be above 7.6. The solution must be slightly basic. And as he exhales CO2, it reacts with water, as I mentioned earlier, forming carbonic acid. And as the solution gets more acidic, as the pH drops, we expect to see its color transition from blue to green, right, when the pH equals the pKa, and then eventually to be yellow. So this is bromothymol blue mixed with water. Argue we're now at that transition point where pH equals pKa. And at that point, it being all yellow, now there's probably 10 times more acidic form than basic form. We're now at a pH that's one less than the pKa or uh, below 6.0. That is it, folks. Well done. Congratulations.